Uh, my name is Nino. Uh, I'm from Viterna Data Science Team. Uh, I'll present a little presentation on customer segmentation and the recommendation systems and the use case we did for one footwear company. Uh, so to start on the agenda of this presentation, uh, there will be some intro, uh, something then about the pipeline, how we developed this solution. Uh, then a little information how the customer segmentation is done, then how the recommendation systems are done, and then we will do uh, everything together and conclude with some conclusions about this presentation. Uh, so to start, first let's define some uh, basic definitions. So what is digital transformation? Uh, digital transformation is the use of digital technologies to create or modify the existing business processes, culture, and customer experiences to meet the changing business and market uh, requirements. And then on the other hand, uh, we have uh, data-driven companies. Uh, those are those companies that uh, drive their strategic decisions based on, on uh, data analysis and the interpretation of data. And that's why we do all this uh, customer uh, behavior analysis, uh, where we focused on the understanding the types of customers, uh, what they do like, what they don't like, and find some patterns in their interactions, uh, find their customer value. Uh, and in the end, we model and anticipate their needs in the future so we can make some adequate recommendations. And with all that, uh, we do understand our customers better. So uh, this way we can make some customer profiles and increase the success of any offers we are making to them. Then we provide value to the customers uh, because uh, this way we empower our customers to make the right decisions themselves. And the end of everything, we are rewarded with some loyalty from this kind of systems because nothing works better than some word of mouth publicity. Uh, and now let's, now, now let's focus a bit on uh, this footwear company, this use case uh, we'll be showing now. Uh, so what are the some potential benefits for this company? First is COVID-19. It happened, we are in time of pandemic. Uh, so it's not just the footwear companies, it's schools, everything is going online. So you have online classes, we have all, everything is online. So also those retail companies transfer their uh, businesses more to online sales to some web shops, web stores. So there's much higher volume of online sales, but it's not just COVID-19 to be honest, uh, it's, it's everything. So sometimes from my perspective, it's uh, it's a rainy Sunday, and I don't want to go to uh, to uh, to physical store and buy something. I'd much rather go to my phone and buy something online. So there's much higher volume on online sales these days. And with this kind of approaches, with this kind of approaches of uh, customer behavior analysis, uh, customer segmentations, and recommendation system, we can boost uh, the sales of our uh, company. In this case, footwear company. And then the second benefit is the long tail strategy. So there are some items that are niche items that don't get sold, sold uh, very often. Some items, let's for example, some vintage shoes or uh, some maybe more expensive shoes that, that don't get sold very often in physical stores, but they're mostly offered online. So this way we can find those right customers by profiling them to find those right customers that are that will like those items. And this way we can generate more sales for those niche, those low, long tail items. And the next benefit is the personalization. By doing all those customer segmentations, customer profiling, we will understand our customers better and we segment them. So we can look on this example where we segment, we segment our customers into different groups. And this way we can know that maybe this segment, first segment, maybe these are some fitness lovers, they like sportly stuff and we can offer them some sports shoes because this is something they are like. And then we have a different group. Maybe these are some ladies that like elegant style and we can offer them some really, really elegant heels or something, something that, that this group will like. And this way uh, we also get a more customer satisfaction from those customers and uh, higher probability of a buy if we recommend the right item to right customer. And now let's look at the pipeline of all our uh, all, all our models. So the first thing is the input where we gather customer data, the customers we're having, we get some item data and we get data from web shop transactions that happened. And then next thing we do 
is the analysis and modeling. So we do all those data cleaning, data pre-processing, all done in Python. And then we make our customer segmentations and, rec and build recommendation systems. And all that is usually presented is usually presented in Power BI. So we present those data of segmentations and recommendations in Power BI, so our end user can easily see why we're making some uh, some recommendations and the recommendations we are making. Uh, so now let's talk about our system, about customer behavior analysis, and let's first focus on customer segmentation. So what is customer segmentation? Uh, let's look at the example where we have some customers and uh, we want to segment them by uh, the margin of items they bought and the number of items uh, those customers bought. So we can see that we have some three groups here of customers. So we do segmentation on three segments and those are the three segments that can be even visually clearly separated. And we can see that there are a different value to us. So this segment right here is uh, the best, the highest value segment because those are the customers that buy the items that uh, bring high margin uh, to our company. And also they are pretty medium number of items they bought. So some, uh, some bought low amount of items, some higher, but it's overall some medium uh, number of items they bought. Well, this group right here is the group that does buy uh, a lot of items and the items they bought don't bring high margin to us. So they are lowest valuable customers. And now let's focus on the real example from this uh, footwear company use case. When we did one of the segmentations we did, we did many segmentations, but one of them, this is the example where we did segmentation on the uh, percent of the items they returned and the value of items they kept. It's really important KPI in this kind of uh, online stores, uh, the return uh, quantities. Uh, so in the end, uh, we did five segmentations. We can see five segments. Uh, you can see segment C1, segment C2, segment C3 right here. Segment C4 is here and here, and we have here segment C5. So uh, then we need to describe those uh, segments. So we see that segment C5 is of highest value to us. So uh, when we assigned value, some score to a segment, we assign score between zero and one. So one is the best score. So this is the best segment, the segment which has low returns and high, uh, high value of items uh, they kept. Uh, the next segment is segment C2 right here. Uh, those are the customers that don't return much items, but the items they kept are not of high value, so they're not really expensive. Uh, then we have the third highest valuable segment, uh, that's the segment C4, which is here and here. And those are the customers that have medium amount of returns and medium value of items they kept. So their score is 0 0.6. Then we have segment C3. C3 is the segment right here, segment C3. And those are the customers that have medium returns, have low value of items they kept. So their score is 0 0.4. And the uh, uh, lowest valuable customers are here at C1. Those are the customers that have high amount of items they return. So we assign them the score of uh, 0.2. Now let's focus on the second uh, base of our uh, customer behavior analysis. That's the recommendation system. So we use two approaches uh, while building a recommendation system. Uh, the first one is collaborative filtering when we are finding similar customers, where the assumption is that customers that bought similar items in the past are likely to buy similar items in the future. So what this means, let's look at some visual example. Let's say we have uh, two customers, Eva and Bob. And let's say we know from the historical transaction data that Bob already bought items A, item B, and item C. And we know that Eva so far has bought also item A and item B. So what is most likely to expect that Eva will buy next? What should we recommend to Eva so she could buy next? It's highly likely that she'll like item C if we could recommend item C to them to her. So uh, this this has really high probability that she'll buy it. So this is something we should recommend by using collaborative filtering. 
But the problem is uh, a cold start problem uh, when we are introducing a new item. So if we're introducing a new item, uh, we have no interactions of an item with customers, so we cannot know uh, if some customer will like it. Uh, and the second approach besides collaborative filtering is content-based modeling, uh, where we'll, we are learning from the customer's previous buys. Uh, what it means that we are working under the assumption that what customer liked before, the customer will like in the future. And now let's look at Eva again. So let's say Eva in this example uh, bought some pink skirt, then Eva bought a pink t-shirt, and then Eva bought a pink heels, and then Eva bought a pink hat. And what should we recommend her next? So should we recommend her next a pink dress, a black dress, or a blue dress? So if Eva so far all the items she bought were pink, it's highly likely that she liked pink colors. So it's good to recommend her a pink dress. This, this is the one she's most likely to like. So this is what content-based modeling would recommend next. But also content-based modeling has one problem, and that's the problem when introducing a new customer. Because when introducing new customer, we have no uh, history of uh, uh, previous buys from this customer, and we cannot know what the customer liked uh, previously. And because all the both the approaches have both approaches have some uh, downfalls. Uh, from this example, we decided to combine everything into a hybrid approach. We combined collaborative filtering and content-based modeling to deal with these problems and have even better solution uh, for uh, our end user, our customer, our client, actually. And this is how it all look, looks like in Power BI when we. Uh, visualize the output. So we have uh, one dashboard right here. And one thing we see that we select one customers to see what we should recommend to this customer. We selected Eva right here as one custom. And we can see that Eva uh, has a web score, customer score of 87.5. So she has a really high score. So she is a highly valuable customer. And we can see the segments using our segmentation that she falls into. So she is a kind of segment that doesn't return many items and the items she she doesn't, she, ke she keeps are of a high value. And we can see more information about Eva right here in the bottom table when we can see where she's from and we can all again see uh, her web score, which is really high, 87.5. And then here on the left side, we can see recommendations. Here are the recommended items for Eva. So using our recommended system, these are the items that Eva will most likely to like, most probably to like. So these are the items we should recommend to Eva uh, as, uh, as part of our recommend recommendation system. But uh, besides using the application like this, we can use it on a different way. So maybe uh, the winter is coming and the summer is gone and we are have some summer items we want to kind of get rid of and recommend some customers. So we can select one recommended item, some really cool shoes, some really cool summer shoes. And then we can see in the bottom table, actually the customers, we would recommend this item too. So Adam, Bob, Carla, Dominic, all those customers are highly likely to like this item. So we can recommend them to them. And finally, uh, realize some sales from this recommendation system. And with all that, uh, I want to conclude with some building blocks, how all this uh, comes together. So uh, we have some building blocks. First, first building block of our system is the data. Uh, we need to have true and relevant data, but we can also have data from various so sources. Uh, so we can have some external data, we can have some uh, ERP data, uh, some BI and analytics data, such as Google Analytics, clicks on page, we can have some demographic data. So we can have a data from the, from uh, various sources, but it has to be true and relevant. And the second building block is the machine learning. Machine learning we use to extract knowledge and get insight from the data, which is the first building block. So here we did first the uh, data cleaning and pre-processing, and then we build those customer segmentations for customer profiling, and we build those recommended system using machine learning. And the third building block, is the, this domain expertise. So uh, our users, our clients use these applications, they use it, they test it, and they provide some context knowledge 
uh, that we can use to, be, to build even better system, to build system that can recommend even better and segment the customers even better. And all those building blocks in the end combine together uh, into true business value. They work synergistically to build business value. And in this way, we can gain higher revenue from this kind of system. We can gain higher uh, customer satisfaction from uh, customer profiling, understanding our customer better and recommending them the right items. And in the end, we can build those personalized marketing campaigns by doing customer profiling. Uh, just think about the value we're bringing uh, from the standpoint of uh, uh, companies like Netflix or Amazon. I know from my example that uh, there are a lot of times I go to Amazon and spend the nice next three hours working on a show that I never, knew, never, never before knew that I would like. Or I go to Amazon and three weeks later, my, my postman brings me something that I never even knew that I wanted. Actually, the fun fact is that 35 of, of uh, 35 percent of the sales from the Amazon are getting from the rare recommendation system. Uh, and with all that, I want to conclude this presentation. So thanks for attention. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or uh, about our solution.